Think of all the exercises in the gym that you could be doing. There's an endless list of exercises. But what if I told you, you only had to focus on six major exercises that's gonna get you 80% of the results in the gym so you can develop a lean chiseled body. If you wanna know which exercises are gonna make the biggest impact on your physique, then this is the video for you. By the end of this video, you're gonna know the six major exercises that you should be focusing 80% of your time on and it's gonna get you the best results. First, think of the movements that most people focus on. Bicep curls, leg extensions, machines, and random isolation exercises. While this is completely fine, it's best to focus on big, heavy compound movements that work many muscles at the same time to give you the biggest bang for your buck, as well as allow you to lift heavy and progressively overload so that you increase the demands on your body over time. So just remember this helpful guideline. 80% of your training should come from compound movements, working multiple joints at the same time, with the remaining 20% coming from isolation movements, working only one muscle or working at one joint. Exercise number one is the barbell bench press. This is a staple horizontal pressing movement. All this means is pushing a weight out in front of you. This works your pushing muscles, the chest, shoulders, and the triceps. These are the muscles that really pop when you're wearing a tank top. For all horizontal presses, you wanna make sure that you master your technique, especially during the setup. You wanna retract and depress your scapula. All that means is you pinch your shoulder blades back and down. Think of this, there's a grape or a pencil in between your shoulder blades and you're trying to squeeze it. This exposes your chest so that you activate more chest fibers. Not only that, but it puts your shoulder in a more comfortable position so that when you're pressing, you don't experience shoulder problems or get a serious shoulder injury. If you don't set up properly for the bench press, you're seriously putting your shoulders at risk and not even activating the correct fibers. I like to do the bench press two times per week in the five to 10 rep range and sometimes going a little bit higher. Since it's a compound movement, you can definitely lift heavy, but also since cardio isn't really gonna limit it, I also sometimes go up to 12, even 15 reps in a metabolic block. Exercise number two is the OHP. The OHP or the overhead press is a vertical pressing movement. This means it's gonna hit your shoulders and your triceps. Although those are the muscles that are getting hit, it's also gonna hit other muscles in your body since it's really a total body movement. When you set up, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you squeeze your glutes and brace your core. So the overhead press will also be activating those muscle fibers as well. You wanna make sure that you maximize force into the bar and also have a vertical bar path over your midfoot. The way you do that is you press up and once the bar gets over your head, you start pushing your head through the window and blocking out overhead. That way you get a full range of motion and you're not pressing the bar out in front of you, which is gonna make the exercise harder and prevent you from getting maximum tension on the shoulders. I like to do the OHP one time per week in the six to 10 rep range. Uh, the reason is that you hit the anterior deltoids as well as the triceps with all other types of pressing movements. And because of that, you don't really need to focus on the overhead press unless the anterior delts and triceps are muscles you really wanna bring up. Exercise number three is the penlay row. The penlay row is a type of barbell row. In my personal opinion, the barbell row isn't as good as activating your back because it's super easy to use a lot of momentum, use other muscles, or be taxed by your lower back. So you're limited by the lower back rather than the lats and the upper mid back. This is especially a problem when you have a pre-existing back injury. Now the penlay row traditionally is used more of a power movement, so you're really explosive and then just drop the weight down. But in this scenario, we're gonna use it as more of a bodybuilding movement. So instead of just lifting the weight up and dropping it, you're gonna lift it up explosively, but slowly lower it using your back muscles. The only difference is that you will be resetting on each rep. That way you're focusing on using the back musculature. So you slowly lower the bar down to the ground, and then you pull again and slowly lower it back down to the ground rather than letting it hover in midair. You can emphasize the lats more by pulling more to your hip with the elbows closer to your body. But I personally like to pull with the elbows flared out more so it hits your mid upper back like your traps and rhomboids more so because you're gonna hit your lats in the next movements anyway. I personally do several types of rows and pull downs from different angles throughout the week. So I recommend you specifically do the penlay row one time per week in the five to 10 rep range. I find that going super heavy is just too easy to use a bunch of momentum and going super light, you'll honestly just get taxed with your lower back rather than uh, the muscles you're trying to focus on. Exercise number four are pull-ups. This is one of the best overall back movements that you can do. It's a vertical pulling movement. So you would think that it would work your lats and get you a wider back, which is definitely true, but it's also gonna hit your mid upper back like your traps and your rhomboids. Most people do this as a calisthenic exercise. That means that you know they just do a bunch of body weight reps, but once you really start getting strong and you can do 10 plus reps, it's a good idea to get a weight belt. You probably have one in your gym. You strap it around your waist and you add five, 10, 20, 
pounds and you just keep building up over time and focus on progressive overload. I even go really heavy in four to six reps to really focus on getting stronger. And then I may do some high rep sets with less weight or with a uh, body weight. I'll cover this in another video, but if you can't do a proper pull up or can't do at least eight body weight in a row, then you can start with lat pull downs and then work your way up with other movements like assisted pull ups. I personally do pull ups two to three times per week in the five to 15 rep range. So yes, I train them frequently. I train them high volume because your lats can recover from that type of work if you program correctly. Exercise number five is a squat. These are arguably the king of lower body exercises. It's mostly gonna hit your quads, but it's also gonna hit your glutes and a little bit of your hamstrings as well. Everyone should be doing some variant of squats. Now, if you're more of a beginner, you can start with body weight squats, uh, goblet squats or front squats. I find goblet or front squats really help you understand the movement pattern and figure out what positioning or how to uh, fix your toe alignment or your stance width so that it prepares you really well for the actual barbell back squat, which is a little bit more complicated. Most people barely hit parallel. The truth is that you want to use a full range of motion to really tax all the muscle fibers maximally. Now, most people can't even hit depth because one, they don't have the proper mobility, usually in the ankles, or they have an improper stance width. That means their feet are too close or too wide, or their toes are pointed out too little or too much. That's why you really gotta focus on your stance, and that way you're gonna more easily hit depth. This took me a lot of experimenting to do, but I personally have a very narrow width, but my toes are pointed out a lot more than most people because my hips are retroverted. That's something that I have to deal with because it's my anatomy. That's the way my skeleton is composed. So don't let anyone tell you, you have to squat one way because that is incorrect and doesn't take into account all these genetic differences we have. I personally squat one, maybe two times per week in the three to eight rep range, sometimes up to 10, but you don't wanna go too high if your cardiovascular fitness limits you from actually doing all the reps with the proper weight. Uh, because at the end of the day, this is more of a lower body movement, not a cardiovascular exercise. Exercise number six is the deadlift. This is like the counterpart to the squat because the squats focus more on the quads, whereas the deadlifts focus more so on the hamstrings and the glutes, as well as the back. During my first year of lifting, I slapped on 225 pounds onto the bar and started repping that out with terrible form. I probably had a rounded back. It was too heavy. So I went to the locker room the next day. I dropped my shirt. I went to pick it up and then I couldn't get back up. I was literally on the floor. I couldn't even walk and it ended up that I tore a disc in my back. And that's a very serious injury, especially at the time I was a kid. I was only like 19 in my first year of lifting or so. And that's why you shouldn't do the deadlift and definitely shouldn't do it with heavy weight if you don't understand the movement pattern. And it's best to start with a more uh, basic movement like the Romanian deadlift, for example. Once you master the hip hinge with the Romanian deadlift, you can move up to the trap bar deadlift, which is a little bit easier. And then you can move up to the main deadlift, which is either conventional or sumo. There's not too much difference between the two types of deadlifts. Conventional deadlifts tend to hit your back a little bit more, whereas sumo deadlifts hit your quads a little bit more. I personally prefer the sumo deadlifts because uh, you know I have that injury I just mentioned. So when I do conventional deadlifts, you're more bent over and uses more back. So there's more sheer force uh, on your spine. So I personally like to do sumo deadlifts because they're much more natural and they feel better for me. Now deadlifts are pretty much the most taxing movement out there. Uh, and you know, you can argue with that, but that seems to be the case for most people. So I personally only deadlift one time per week and maybe I would do a Romanian deadlift on the other lower body session of the week. I do deadlifts in the three to eight rep range. I usually wouldn't go much higher than that because it's very likely that your cardiovascular fitness will limit you or you'll compensate by rounding your back or you'll get tired and you're just increasing your risk of injury. But at the end of the day, you do what works for you. Those are the six major exercises that you should be focusing on. Now, if you want an actual workout plan so that you can go, um, you know, get a proper plan in place and do those exercises, then the best place to start is my full body program. I'm going to put the video right here. So make sure that you check out that video right now. My name is Hamad Ba, owner and founder of IQ Physique, creator of the Skinny Fat Shred program. Check out that video right now and I'll see you next time.